Welcome to this week's edition of Ignite News. I'm Megan Adams. There has been many successful students at the radio broadcasting program. Let's check out some of their stories. Hey man, nice shot. Filter on 97.7 Hits FM, Southern Ontario's Best Rock. Up on I am the assistant music director, so I get to learn from one of the best, Polly Morris, who is uh, very knowledgeable when it comes to music. And I am also the evening announcer, so I get the beauty of being in this haunted house because this, this place is haunted, uh, overnight. So I'm here till 11 p.m., uh, on air, 7 p.m. till 11 p.m. And I'm uh, pretty much scared for my life because there's, you know, ghosts in, in this building, apparently. Up on the Hits FM Facebook page right now, we are talking about the last song that you'd want to hear before the end of the world. It's a really weird story for me because I feel like radio found me. Uh, I didn't really find radio. I kind of... Uh, I wasn't the most popular kid in high school, so I spent a lot of time on the internet, and I did a lot of like internet videos and things like that, and then I went into performing arts school at Sheridan and realized I am not a ballet dancer. This is not what I want to do, but I do really like being creative, and I like this kind of industry, so where can I go from here? And it didn't work out at Sheridan, so I decided, well, I'm going to do one thing one way and one thing the other way. So it was like zero to 100. I applied for nursing, and I applied for radio, and I got into both, and I laughed and said, well, where, what do I want to be? Do I want to be someone who's going to be cleaning up after people's pee and poo all day and helping, you know, the greater good of society, or do I want to do that and have fun? Uh, the Tragically Hip will be performing at the Meridian Center coming up February 17th. All you have to do to win them. Uh, so I took the radio program because... At that point, you're like, well, how else am I going to get into radio, right? You kind of come, you, you get to a brick wall and you're like, well, am I going to just start applying or start volunteering at stations or am I actually going to maybe go and get an education and try this out? So I thought, well, maybe school will lead me and they'll open some doors for me, lead me to a good place. And I did. I took the, Mo I took the program at Mohawk and I was maybe a little bit bored with it because I wanted to do more you know I always had the I'm not doing enough in radio feeling so I uh, started doing some volunteer work and I volunteered at a uh, an internet radio station Image FM which is my buddy Mark Brewer through that I ended up starting to apply for jobs because Mark said you should really start applying you know you're you're kind of doing your own thing you're building a little bit of confidence you should do it so I thought you know what let's screw it I'm gonna look and I'm gonna see what's out there and I started applying for those entry-level jobs. And year two, I think it was maybe like a month into year two, and I got a job in Peace River, Alberta. And from there, I've, I've been all over Canada. It was, it's been amazing. It's been such a great journey. But no, I never graduated. I never, never got that piece of paper. So definitely a different uh, road than some people take. But it's all about wanting to do it. That's it. That's all radio it, it, it really is. And why would you want to hear that one? Steve texted in to 977-977 and he said, METALLICA! For someone who wants to do on air, yeah. you're gonna start at the bottom of the barrel. That is the hardest, hardest piece of information to get because I feel a lot of people in radio school are like, I can do this, I am so good at this, and I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna get the biggest and best job, or in reality, with any job it's not just radio you work to where you're gonna be and whether it's starting off in a cruiser position and being the person who gets the coffees for the announcers you want to get your name out there you want to go on Facebook and add everybody in radio because that's what we're doing we're on there and we're networking with each other you want to be aggressive with it you want to get your name out there you want people to remember you especially when you're first starting out because those connections will come back later my dad would just blast all the old guys like uh, the Everly Brothers, the Four Seasons, the Beatles. Hey, Ignite Radio Beatles Mania here. You are listening to the Beatles blog. I never even thought I would get into radio broadcasting. This was the last thing that I thought I would uh, get into. I mean, I tried to find something where I could... Uh, incorporate my love of music and uh, 
radio seems like the best thing at this point, and uh, then I guess I can go from there because uh, I can't play an instrument, so I might as well try and make money off of uh, other people playing their instruments well. It's featuring uh, Roger Hodgson of Super Tramp, and before that we heard I'm a Loser. Two weeks ago I was contacted by the uh, general manager of uh, Beatles Magazine on Facebook, and uh, yeah, she... She's been sharing all my information uh, on Beatles Magazine's pages. Um, over 60 or 76,000 likes on their page uh, for this page alone. So uh, they shared my information and within two hours, uh, the first day, I ended up getting 10 new likes on my uh, Beatles Mania page. And those are organic likes. So um, it's just great that uh, people are seeing my posts and uh actually liking the page these aren't even people in north america either i uh, i've been getting people from argentina and sweden even liking my my page as well you know so just the power of social media is just crazy you're not going to uh just have the regular old studio cuts when it comes to beatles mania i like to play the anthology cuts all the studio outtakes live at the bbc the things that you won't hear on uh on the radio and uh i like to play rare interviews and things as well and uh try to relate them to some sort of theme for each show we have some bob dylan coming up and an interview with the beatles on uh bob dylan and his influence on the band it's really like a puzzle i mean you have to uh you have to try and make sure all the songs fit and they flow into each other really because you can't just throw tracks on there because it just doesn't work unless you actually listen to the tunes and make sure that they have a good flow with them. It's Beatles 1, obviously. That was uh, when I first got into them. It was the rock and roll in that. Because most of that album is a lot of their earlier songs. There are some of their later psychedelic songs. But then I moved into uh, the Magical Mystery Tour. That's probably my favorite Beatles album of all time. I just love all the cuts off that uh that album. As the population gets bigger, more and more Beatles fans are going to emerge. I mean, uh, their music will never die. There's a a school in uh, Mohawk College, or like a daycare, I guess, for little ones, and uh, every day they would walk past the studio or whatnot, and even the little ones, four or five years old, they would know Beatles music, and they'd be smiling, and uh, so it's just great to see uh, even the little ones are have great parents and uh, their parents are exposing them to great music. Mohawk College has opened its doors to 3D printing. Elaine Morris has a story. In just about 10 years, 3D printing technology has come a long way. The quality has gone from plastics to space qualified metals and it's now readily available at Mohawk College's E-Wing 3D printing lab. Rather than ordering an expensive part, it can simply be printed. We have a lot of industry partners and stakeholders that are coming to the lab to see what it is we can produce and the benefits we offer to the industry. We have a lot of uh, government officials here to see the benefits of their donations and the funding that they've raised. And we also have just a lot of curious people who are really looking to explore the possibilities of this in the actual workforce. We are probably the most advanced lab in Canada, if not uh, North America. Nobody has all the machines we have together. There are certain places that have one or two, but nowhere has everything in one shot like we do. And the industry is starting to recognize this. The scope that we are able to provide from them from beginning to end and all the steps in between, they see that, that it's just unmeasurable the changes this can make to their company and their we're beating them away with a stick to stop them from getting in here. Our real expertise is in a small run of extremely complex parts. Uh, stru like finite analysis and structural optimization is what we specialize in. So we'll take a part, we'll load into the computer, run simulations, determine where and how much stress is applied to it, and then we'll create more of an organic shape that you might have seen lying around the lab. So we can reduce the weight of certain parts, such as by 30%, and increase the performance up to 400%, if not more. And especially with certain partners like Comdev, uh, when it comes to thousands of dollars per gram hoisting something into space, if I can, or if we can cut 30% off of parts, that's a huge uh, cost savings in the long run to the company. Reporting for Ignite News, I'm Elaine Morris. And the Oscar goes to... 
This Oscar season, we saw a surprising number of TIFF films make it into the Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Director, and Best Supporting Actor categories. One of those is The Imitation Game, which stars Benedict Cumberbatch, featuring him as Alan Turing, a World War II British scientist looking to crack the Enigma Code. Gentlemen, meet Mr. Turing. We were to work together then. I'm afraid these men would only slow me down. Popular at school, way. Film critic Alex Reynolds thinks that the imitation game did a good job of focusing on what was important in Turing's story. But his accomplishments are what it's all about. And I think the film very adequately displays that. And he's up for an Academy Award, quite obviously, and is one of the highlights of the year for me. Another film that's garnering a lot of attention this Oscar season is the TIFF film Whiplash, which stars J.K. Simmons, and he's already won a Golden Globe for his performance as an eclectic music teacher. Cheer. Little trouble there. You're rushing. Here we go. Five, six, and... Were you rushing or were you dragging? For Whiplash, that's kind of a dark horse in a way, too, and... Good for J.K. for doing what he's done on it because it was amazing. The final movie in the TIFF Oscar preview is Theory of Everything, which stars Eddie Redmayne. Off from home. What if I reverse time to see what happened at the beginning of time itself? Reynolds believes that being a bit of an unknown won't affect Redmayne's Oscar hopes. In this case, with all of the hype, that the attendant hype that's gone on, it's going to help his chances. But no matter who ends up with the Oscar this February, Reynolds is just happy with the quality of the films. Thank goodness we're getting some quality films out there. For Ignite News, I'm Alex Smythe. Ignite News Game Reviewer Steven Sobot has your weekly game review. The school semester is starting again, and you know what that means. Homework, responsibility, and no more time for games. During the winter break, you had all the time in the world to do whatever you wanted. It wasn't a big deal playing six hours straight of League of Legends because, unless you had a job, you really didn't have much else to do. Immersive and addicting games like Skyrim or Civilization suck up time like a spice-obsessed chef. <laughs> but now you've got deadlines and work to do. If you spend six hours each day playing video games, you're going to have trouble dealing with your work. So here are three quick-fix games that Excuse don't take too long to complete. Duels of the Planeswalkers is an electronic version of the card game Magic the Gathering, produced yearly. Each game has a campaign where you travel from different key planes of existence in the Magic multiverse, defeating the main characters of the game, called Planeswalkers. I could go more in depth in the story of the game, but if you don't know about it, it'll take hours to understand the whole multiverse. Duels makes it easy for you to pick up a game and play it quickly, each match taking up anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes at worst. While you do have to play through the campaign to unlock all the decks, it doesn't take a long time to complete it. If you're not familiar with Magic the Gathering, I'd also recommend Hearthstone, a simpler and more accessible alternative. It's free, doesn't take long to learn, and has the same bite-sized game format Magic has. Double kill. Sometimes you need something to get that blood flowing before you do your work. Something that is adrenaline-filled. Something that is violent. Unreal Tournament is a first-person shooter that makes other first-person shooters look tame. The game is set sometime in the dystopian future where the most popular sport is the Unreal Tournament. A tournament where criminals and psychopaths alike compete for prize money. Anything's allowed, anything goes. That's the name of the game. You get an extensive array of weapons, ranging from rockets to sludge rifles to nuke guns. The game gives you a lot of control over how you want the match to go. You can set the game to have a timer or a kill capture count as the win condition. You can have an excessive amount of bots playing with or against you, and you can change who the bots are and what their names are. Think the game is too normal? Add mutators that change the game drastically like low gravity and one hit kills. Overall, Unreal Tournament, a game of the year edition at least, is a very fun and explosive game that really feels like a game from an era long gone. Street Fighter 4 is currently the most advanced fighting game on the market right now. You get a large staple of fighters to choose from, each with their own unique story and fighting style. 
you've got your standard Street Fighters, like Ryu and Chun-Li, but you also have a bunch of new and old faces, like Akuma, a demonically possessed warrior, Akan, a Turkish oil wrestler, and El Fuerte, a world-class chef who also happens to be a luchador. You can complete the one-player campaign in under half an hour, about the same time you get for a lunch break. Street Fighter is the kind of game that is easy to play, but hard to master. Once you've figured out how to do some of the basic special attacks, you can find an optimal strategy with that fighter. I personally like El Fuerte's jumping around like a maniac technique. It's... effective. I hope you find this list helpful. You can find my extended version of this list on Ignite News Online and my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching! If your New Year's resolution was to get fit, we have some tips for you. Hi there, my name's Carlin. Today we're heading into the Debark at Mohawk College to meet with wellness coach Spring Brunaccioni to talk about workout methods if you are new to the gym. Well, depending on the sex, I would say a female needs to have a really good sports bra, comfortable uh, clothing that is sports geared like uh, yoga pants or shorts that are, are above the knee if they're planning on lifting weights but generally a t-shirt, something that they can move in comfortably. Um, okay. Beginners, I would suggest that uh, they learn what dynamic stretching is, opposed to static stretching. Uh, they should have about 10 minutes of dynamic stretching before they do anything in the gym, and then their cool down can be static stretching 10 minutes at the end. In saying that, dynamic stretching is when you are using your body and it's in a flowing motion, opposed to just holding a static stretch. So you'll see a lot of people that are walking the track or taking 10 minutes on a treadmill or an elliptical. Anything where they're flowing and in range of motion is a very good warm-up. Um, now if you're a beginner I suggest that you don't even go on weight machine. Don't, don't lift weights at this point because you could really seriously hurt yourself. Uh, the most important thing to know about exercise is positioning is very important. You have to protect the lower back. So to be in the right position when you're doing a movement is the fundamental. If you're not in the right position, you're not using the muscles you think you're using and you take risk of hurting yourself. Uh, I would suggest for somebody who's never been in a gym before to actually um, go into a place where they can do floor exercises. Simple, one of the most simple exercises that everybody should begin with and you're probably familiar with is laying on your back and pulling your abdomen into the floor. It's, it's a very important uh, core exercise and for the lower back. You should try your push-ups because they're fundamentally good for anyone. Um, even in a push-up, you can go from having weight on your back uh, with right on the ground or an easy, easy push-up for someone who's never walked into a gym is doing one on the wall. So just the push-up itself, I could give you probably a good 10 variations of how to do a push-up. Basic exercises that you know, that you know how to get in position for. Sit-ups, push-ups, uh, a plank is an excellent exercise for a beginner, but simple ones so that you can do the position and get your body used to it. Yes, you can do some cardio, um, resistance training is different from cardio, so if you're picking up resistance bands or even stability ball, um, that would be resistance training and that's a form of weight training because you can use your own body weight to build. Uh, you should be able to set a goal for about three weeks and, and at that time you will probably see some kind of change in your body, whether it's energy level or appetite. Uh, or um, just overall feeling good because you may not see a lot of significant change in your body but it's starting to happen. Measuring your progress is very easy. If you walk into a gym and you set your goals at say uh, 10 sit-ups, three sets of 10 and you, give, and, and you go into the gym and one day you can do 12 sit-ups without any effort, that's how you're measuring whether you're doing well or not. I mean, the better you do, the more you do, uh, the more you're going to be able to do. So if you start off doing a push-up against the wall, say in three weeks, you want to take it down to the floor and maybe do it on your knees or have your 
hands in the right position by your, your chest, but you'll be able to do that now. And that's how you measure it. You'll be able to do more in the gym properly. 2015 has arrived. And if your New Year's resolution is a healthier lifestyle, personal trainer and professional wrestler Justin Ellis can give you a little help prepping in the kitchen. Pretty much each rest could be one meal for a male, if you're female, cut it in half. It's like one chicken breast is like, hang on the size, 60 to 75 grams of protein, which is a lot. It's definitely like the best way to go in terms of protein next to fish. So we got 10 chicken breasts there. That would usually last me a week. So an average two a day, maybe one and a half. So you can get creative. You can like really chop it up, grill it. You can make a stir fry on some of the breasts. You can even chop it up, mix with eggs, make little breakfast wraps. So always season your food. Don't be scared about spices. Like spices are not going to get you fat in any way, shape or form. Sodium can be an issue, but like it's not that big of a deal providing you're drinking your eight glasses of water. If you're active, try and hit a gallon. So if you're wondering what's this for, this is what keeps the moisture inside your chicken. Eating clean is very beneficial when it comes to losing weight or being healthy. What's on your plate? For more information on Justin's healthy lifestyle, visit ignitenews.ca. Reporting for Ignite News, I'm Rebecca Anderson. A new year means new goals and resolutions. We're talking about how the Fitbit works, the benefits of wearing a fitness device while exercising, and how it can improve your fitness routine. The Fitbit is a device that is worn around your wrist. It tracks your steps, how many miles you've walked, calories burned, and active minutes throughout the day. The way this information is gathered is by Bluetooth, then directly uploaded by your smartphone via Wi-Fi or data. As you can see, the step counter is pretty accurate. Unless it comes to biking, for some reason biking just does not work with the Fitbit. As well as the app, the Fitbit is also accessible online. It displays a dashboard to give you all information that is available on the app with more in-depth information. The online dashboard is perfect for people who have a difficult time seeing on a smaller screen or for people who want a more visual look at their data. The online dashboard as well as the app both congratulate you for reaching daily goals. Moving on to the log portion of the dashboard, you can log your food, activities, weight, and sleep, seeing how much progress you've made or where you need to improve. This allows you to wake up without an annoying alarm clock. The bracelet simply vibrates on your wrist to wake you. There is a social part to the Fitbit as well, with a community with help forms where you can choose your type of Fitbit and view frequently asked questions by other users. You can also ask questions if you can't find what you're looking for. There's also a discussion portion where you can talk about your story, your weight loss, how to find motivation, whatever works for you, it's just a more social part of the app. It can be difficult to get back into a fitness routine. Wellness coach Spring Bernaccioni tells us the benefits of using a fitness device. These are what your heart rate monitors and your Fitbits. They're going to be able to track you, be able to give you that information instantly, and you'll know exactly how well you're doing. Um, just like a pedometer, maybe you walk 10,000 steps a day. When you look at that one day, you're going to look down and go, hey, wait a minute, now I'm walking 15,000. So that's what those are for. They're really good, and uh, you can put your own personal information into them. That way it's designed for you, and it's monitoring you, no one else. The Mountaineers faced off the Cougars in varsity basketball. Sean Marenka has the story. Mohawks Lady Mountaineers started off the second half of their season in a dominant fashion, improving to 11-1 with a win over Sioux College, 75-42. Mohawk was unrelenting in its full-court pressure, causing 22 turnovers, which led to an easy 19 points for the team. Rachel Abella took control of the game from the beginning, tallying an impressive stat line of 13 points, 7 assists, 6 steals, and 0 turnovers. It was a strong win for the women, who now sit atop the OCAA, two games ahead of Humber, the only team to defeat Mohawk this year. The squad will be running on a full tank of gas to start off this semester, having several players return from injury to bump their roster up to 14, all of who receive playing time. The Mountaineers' depth will become an important factor as the season progresses, especially considering their high-octane style of play.
On the men's side, Mohawk refused to take their foot off the gas pedal, topping the Cougars 112-75. to The win improves the Mountaineers' record to 10-2, and which puts them in second place in the West Division. Matt Fennell started off the game on a ridiculously hot note, scoring the squad's first 15 points and setting the tone for a shootout. Fennell finished with 35 points, shooting 5 for 9 from beyond the arc and topping it off with 6 assists. Offensively, the team was relentless, sharing the ball and getting open shots for everyone on the court, particularly the players coming in off the bench. Mohawk scored 45 points off the bench compared to 13 provided by the Cougars subs. On the other side of the court, the team struggled stopping the ball and creating a defensive presence, allowing Sue to score easy points in transition. Cougars guard Joey Bruni, who averaged less than 15 points coming into the contest, added 30 of his own, mostly coming from wide open threes where Mohawk failed to get a hand in his face. I, I mean, the Sioux just kept fighting and fighting and fighting, but defensively I thought we were pretty poor tonight. Um, gave up a lot of open shots and uh, people seemed to be in the lane at will, so we've got a lot of stuff to clean up if we're going to uh, improve enough to challenge for national championship in the next couple months. The Mountaineers head to Windsor this Friday to take on St. Clair. The women start at 6 and the men will tip off at 8 p.m. Reporting for Ignite News, I'm Sean Marenka. Mohawk College will be hosting the 2015 CCAA Men's National Championship in the spring for colleges across Canada. This year will mark the 40th anniversary since the tournament began in 1975 at the Mount Royal College in Calgary. The national championships feature the top eight teams from across Canada, including five conference championships, the host team and two wild cards. The Mohawk Athletic and Recreation Department will be responsible for coordinating and hosting the CCAA and OCAA championships. The, the National Basketball Championships are the crown jewel of sport in Canada. It's uh, the biggest, pretty much the biggest championship that you can host. So it's really going to have a lot of pride for our school and it's going to provide some great opportunities for students to do some on-the-job learning at the championships. The tournament will be held at the Debark at the end of March. For Ignite Sports, I'm Carlin McGill. That's all for your Ignite News. I'm Megan Adams. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.